Welcome to Decision Point. How can we learn to pray like someone who is arguably the most effective intercessor in the world, Dr. Paul Young Yi Cho? Our guest today, Derek Packard, developed an internet course of Dr. Cho's teachings. And he is here along with his wife and prayer partner, Marie, to tell us more about it. Welcome. Thank you. I guess I should say welcome back, right? That's right. Yeah, right. Sister. Yeah, that's right. When we have to establish that right off the bat. You're the big Full brother. Full disclosure. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, so um, Derek and I, we actually grew up in, in the media business together, and I mm -hmm. started all my media career uh, with you and the broadcasts that you used mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a lot of, of training programs with a number of very well-known people and so forth, and uh, you... Uh, actually got to fulfill a dream by working with one of the men that you most admire in the whole world, Dr. Cho. Uh, how did that come about? Well, for those of that have seen the other program, we told our testimony about how we began to pray the tabernacle prayer. And after praying that for several years, and we had a beautiful son, DJ, then we had another son, John David. So we actually got we had two, two daughters who were teenagers now, and then we have two sons who are young. And so we have our full quiver as... Your, and your built-in babysitters, too. And right? our built-in babysitters, <laughs> right. that's right. God so, knew what he was doing, huh? <laughs> but the tabernacle prayer was something that Marie and I continued to pray. It was such a blessing to us, and we really felt discipled by the Holy Spirit as we did it. And other people started praying it um, in our prayer group at New Life Church. And we actually did a website at, at that time called Temple Prayer, Dot com and people would go there. But then a couple years later, something really fascinating happened. Uh, I was doing some work for a church out in Portland, um, City Bible Church, Pastor Frank DiMazio. And Pastor Frank has a prayer conference every year. Uh, and this one year, he, he called me and said, hey, guess who's going to be here? Dr. Cho is coming from Korea to be at our intercessors conference. And that is a very big deal. That's kind of like Yes. The Pope's like the Pope town. showing up. Yeah, right. <laughs> so Marie and I, uh, of course, found that out and some of the other folks that we pray with in, in Colorado Springs, and we started praying, Lord, please have him speak on the tabernacle prayer. Because that, that was his deal. There yeah. was no video on it at all. That is there was amazing. just a little booklet. Wow. And um, so we prayed that, and then and weeks rolled by, and we were in uh, Portland, and um, the conference started, and Pastor Cho was the speaker that first night. And lo and behold, he gets up to the podium and he starts telling the story of the ministry in South Korea. And then he begins by saying, and tonight I teach you the most important prayer I've ever learned. I teach you tabernacle prayer. Oh, my gosh. And then he goes on for the next so 90 we, minutes. We, and we have a, a clip that we'll show our, our folks right now where he talks about uh, how he... He got the tabernacle part. The most important prayer that God taught me is the tabernacle prayer. You know, I need to pray very effectively so that I may receive all the anointing that I need for that job. So one day, while I was lecturing in Taiwan, in a split of a second, God showed me the revelation about tabernacle prayer. And since that time on, until now, decade after decade, I've been praying in this uh, tabernacle prayer. And whenever I finish tabernacle prayer, I would receive enough anointing to carry out that day's burden. So tabernacle prayer is so effective and so precious. And I, this evening, I want to share about tabernacle prayer. When Israelite was coming through the wilderness led by the Moses, God asked Moses to build the tabernacle, which he saw on the Mount Sinai. And when he built the tabernacle in the wilderness, then God commanded all Israelites to come and worship God only in the tabernacle. So in the tabernacle, God was dwelling and meeting people there. And when you see the, the tabernacle, they, it has a many kind of the, uh, things through which they could uh, worship God. But now we don't see the tabernacle, but the Bible says, ye are the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And our spirit is analogous to the Holy of Holies. 
Our mind is analogous to the holy place, and our physical body is analogous to the courtyard. So we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now we don't need to go to wilderness to find the tabernacle. We don't need to go to Jerusalem to find the Solomon temple. You are the tabernacle. And the God who dwelt in the tabernacle and the Solomon's temple now dwells in you fully. So it's fascinating to hear Dr. Cho speak. It's not like he's this flashy guy uh, or anything. He really is a, a very humble guy, and, and uh, you have to pay close attention to what he says or you miss something, right? right? So what did you get from him? What insights did you get that, that you didn't get by having prayed that prayer all this time? Any, well, yeah. for me, it was um, there's obviously an anointing that comes mm -hmm. with a man who's giving a, a core testimony about why, you know, what his life is based on. And he attributes all the success of the most successful church in the world to literally God working through him as, as he learned this prayer. And as he's, he's been faithfully praying it for five decades, 50 years. And he started out praying it three to five hours a day. I mean, it's just so off the charts in terms of the difference of the way American church uh, approaches church versus the way that Pastor Cho and this Korean church uh, and his um, staff approach it. So it, it was fascinating. I think anointing was one thing and just hearing his story, uh, all the, the, right. the humor and his own testimony of, and how he does it. It's, just, it's how he attributes success. He has all these pastors coming to see him and look to him and they want to know how to be successful in many ways. Mm -hmm. And here he says, I'll teach you how to do that and that's by prayer. Mm -hmm. and how he wanted to start off praying just more than a few minutes a day. Right. The Lord showed him this, and all of a sudden the hours are rolling by. Right. So it's yeah. very different than what right. we're used to in our culture. Right, and, and certainly we can attest to that because we, we have used the tabernacle prayer, and it, does, it is a, a great right. format to help guide you through the prayer process as yes. long as you're not rushing it. You know, it's not a right. formula, as you say. Mm -hmm. And so, so what is the scripture that... Dr. Cho um, bases the tabernacle prayer on, and, and the Lord, Lord, you know, had given him an insight, a vision, and then he just began doing it, and, and it transformed his whole ministry. But, but what's the scripture that, that is foundational for that? In your Bible, if you have a computer and you did a word search on the words temple or tabernacle, you'd find that over 1,200 sightings of that those two words in the scripture and of course there's many other words for the the house of the lord or the house of god but it's it's a theme that's literally there's more chapters devoted to the idea of the house of god the temple of god the tabernacle of god than any other topic in scripture so when you uh, look at it from that perspective you say wow why would i not uh, want to know about this why would i not want to see god's order of worship so to speak and so there's so much scripture about the tabernacle that it's, it's off the charts. Yeah. It's not one of those teachings or um, Bible studies that's based on one or two verses or a chapter. It, it's, there's literally thousands of verses and passages that tie into aspects of the tabernacle because that's the center of Israelite worship. So the whole Old Testament from Moses uh, through David and Solomon all the way up to Herod's temple. Uh, there's, there's numbers of temples in the Bible, you know, starting the, the Jews actually, the Jewish people actually look at the Garden of Eden as a first temple. Mm -hmm. And they believe that Solomon's temple was a recreation of that. That's why there's so many uh, flowery designs and tree designs on Solomon's temple. On Temple Mount in Jerusalem, this is something you can go to the ground where Solomon's temple was in Israel on Temple Mount today. So it, and then, of course, it's all based on the heavenly pattern of the temple in heaven, which we read about in Revelation. So the temple is a phenomenal topic. And then, of course, when Jesus was crucified, he referred tear to the, down, the tearing down this temple, temple in three I'll days. It yeah, in three right, days. right. He, and Jesus like, said, my days. body is a temple, John 2.21. He was referring to his own body. So Jesus was the first manifestation of a God-built temple on earth. All the other temples preceding that, Solomon's temple, Herod's temple, where Jesus as a 12-year-old went in there and, and talked to the, 
uh, Pharisees and they were amazed at how well learned he was. Well, he was in Herod's temple, but he considered that my father's house. Mm -hmm. And in John chapter two, we see where Jesus drove out the money changers to really begin his ministry. He said, my house will be called a house of prayer. My father's house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. So Jesus had a zeal for the temple, a zeal for his father's house. Yeah. And that's one thing that you catch as you pray this way. You catch the same zeal that Jesus caught about his father's house. So our bodies then are that temple. Uh, and so we, yeah. we, our bodies then become that temple and that place of worship. Right. So let's talk about the tabernacle prayer specifically. Um, the first, there, there's, you kind of, can you kind of give us an overview? How There are kind of eight steps, if you will, mm -hmm. to praying the tabernacle prayer or the the tabernacle worship process, mm -hmm. as you like to say, but uh, what are the what is the what are the eight steps um, based on? And well, we have a, a graphic we can put up to help folks with that, and of course, on the website you can download resources that would help you. But it, it's like God for all those that used to be in Sunday school back in the day, and I was actually before my time. But Marie tells me about this when her mom was a Sunday school teacher. They used a thing called a flannel graph. Oh, right. And they would put up pictures of things to help the kids understand uh, the process from beginning to end. And again, this is God's ordained pattern of worship. So the temple, the furniture in the temple and the rooms in the temple are like God's flannel graph. He's giving it for everyone, no matter what language you speak, no matter uh, what age you live in. Uh, you can go to the tabernacle and see these key pieces of God's ordained worship yeah. pattern. And so it's uh, li so it's like you're you're entering into the temple and stopping at these various places and going through the the ritual, so to speak, that they would have gone through, um, but in, in in a prayerful way. So it's actually the kind of experience that a, a Jew would have had when he was going into the temple, or a priest would have had right. when he was going into the temple. But right. in a more life-giving way, because now that you've seen Christ die on the cross and rise again, right. Jesus now has, it's, you can see an overlay of Christ in this. In everything, it foreshadows everything Christ, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, right. yeah, that's, I think, a huge concept to understand. Again, it's we talk about Old Testament, we talk about the priesthood in the Old Testament, That's and the ritualistic, it's not that at all, no. in the sense of it's an order of worship. And Jesus literally fulfilled every order, every aspect of the worship pattern. And so you learn about Jesus as you pray the scriptures. We don't, uh, the Old Testament priests never, they probably, they prayed the Old Testament scriptures and sang songs in the temple, and they had uh, the furnishing served a very specific purpose right. for them. Today, we look at what Jesus, how he fulfilled, for example, the first, the gate, for example, yeah. the Eastern gate would right. be the first step. And we know from scripture that Jesus is the gate. He's right. um, a gate for the sheep in John, based on John 10, nine, John 10, nine. Oh, yeah. So why would Jesus say, I'm a gate for the sheep? What, what does that mean? Well, it means he's saying that one day he's going to come through the Eastern gate. He's a gate. He's the only way to God. Right. There is no other way to approach his father in right. heaven. He's the right. one that died on the cross and reconciled all of us back right. to God. So he's the only way in. He's the, he's the gate to heaven. Right. So that would be step one. And, and what you do in the temple prayer, the tabernacle prayer, is you find scriptures that relate to these ideas and you literally allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in a prayer process where you pray the word, pray the scriptures. And it's by praying the word and the Holy Spirit working in you that this stuff comes alive. Right. Yeah. So it's not a, um, a ritual uh, in that sense. It's not sense. a recipe. It's not, it's not a liturgy. Yeah. You, you have to a, go through this. Right. But it's... There's huge blessings right. at every right. So the second step is understanding that Jesus is the Lamb of God and uh, that his blood saves. And so that's based on 1 Peter 1.19. And... Um, we actually have a, a clip of Dr. Cho talking about that and, and giving his perspective on that. So let's roll to the clip where he talks about the second step of the tabernacle prayer. On the brazen altar, Israelite, they would offer the sin offering, trespass offering, burnt offering, thanks offering, or offering of uh, reconciliation and so forth and so on. But all of those offerings represent our Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross, Calvary. So I come in my imagination 
to the brazen altar of the cross of Calvary, and I see Jesus, and I see the redeeming grace flowing out from Calvary. I say, dear Jesus, through your sacrifice, through your shed blood, my sin has been forgiven. I have been declared as righteous, and I can now enjoy the glory of God. You know, as a Christian, we are enjoying the glory of God. Glory is in us, the Shekinah glory of God. When we commit sin, the glory lives, and we feel terrible pain in our spirit. But when we restore our fellowship with God, then we once again experience the Shekinah glory come and dwell in us. So I say, oh dear Jesus, through thy blood, my sin has been forgiven completely, and I have been declared as a righteous person, so I can enjoy this glory in you. I thank you, dear Jesus. Then I say, dear Jesus, through your blood, you have conquered the world and the devil. And now, through the blood, I can have sanctification and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. I claim the sanctification. I claim the fullness of the Holy Spirit through the blood. Dear Jesus, through the blood, give me the sanctification. Give me the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Then I look, to, look up to the Christ hung upon the cross again, and I say, dear Jesus, you took my infirmities and carried away my sickness. Bible says, by his stripes ye were healed. So I am healed. Since 2,000 years ago, legally speaking, I have been healed through your sacrifice. And sickness is illegal because it is Jesus Christ already paid the price for the healing. So I claim the healing. So Dr. Cho uh, talks about the importance of, of this in, in his own life, and he weaves his own testimony through it. And I know you got some insights into that as well from this step. Well, he, yeah, it's fascinating to see how impactful this prayer was to Dr. Cho. And he does relate when he teaches it. This, this video is now um, one of the most popular, if not the most popular prayer teaching on the internet. We've had 110,000 people watch it as of today. So it's like an, a 90 minute um, video with graphics and all of that kind of thing of Dr. Cho providing, actually doing the teaching he's on teaching the temperament. Yeah, right. right. And, so. and he's the one that originated it, God gave it to him. So it's a phenomenal thing for any Christian who's interested in going deeper with the Lord or learning. It's like a Bible study as, as much Could as it is. Could be used as that, as that Absolutely. if you wanted to, yeah. Because yeah. it's a phenomenal way to learn about the Bible and to learn about Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, which is a huge thing for many Americans, especially we, we want to know how Jesus connects to something like this. Mm -hmm. And over the years, you know, I've actually asked the Lord as people would ask me, what's going on with you? Why are you praying this? And I see the things that are happening in your marriage and in your life with DJ and our, our children. But why do you do this? It seems like an Old Testament thing. But it's when you, God has answered all that through just by us praying it, he's given us insights on how to tell people right. about it. But it really is, for me, has been a huge growth in my understanding of Jesus Christ right. by praying the t right. tabernacle prayer. So it's, it's not just that it's an Old Testament process based on the Old Testament <laughs> temple, but it also includes and in very much... Um, uh, foreshadows and talks about the Lord and how he's fulfilled each one of these things. And so the third step is the living water that cleanses and, and that's really going to the laver and, and uh, how has that impacted your guys' life as you've prayed Anyone the living water that cleanses? That was, that was a huge area for, area for me, especially uh, during the eight, eight month period prior to finding out I was pregnant with DJ. Derek and I praying to get together every day. And as Dr. Cho teaches, he uses the Ten Commandments as a template because the laver is the area where the priests of old would go and wash themselves, wash their hands, prepare themselves to go in to the holy place. Mm -hmm. And they had to be clean. So how many times do we not think about our own lives and investigate our own lives? We go to God with our laundry list, let's say, of stuff. And, but it was a place for me to camp out and just look through the eyes, the template of the Ten Commandments. How am I doing, Lord? And he began ministering to me in ways that no conference, no, a million times to the altar in a way 
couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And it brought to life to me the commandments versus it's just a list that's in the right. Bible. They became a life giving boundaries. Just it was so life giving to me and healing to my heart. It was it was amazing. So the the Ten Commandments kind of became something that you reflected on each day, but the Lord, Lord kind of quickened or enlivened yes. a right. particular commandment, per, perhaps for that day, something to look at. Well, Holly, right. there's so much. Again, when you start looking at it from this perspective, there's so much scripture on the ten, various aspects sure. of the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are God's written commandments. When He didn't write just once, He wrote them down twice for us. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus, what did He say about the commandments? Did He get rid of the commandments? No, He, he mm -hmm. took them deeper. He said, you've been doing these external obedience to these commandments. Right. Now, if you look upon a woman with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery. So he internalized all the commandments. So the idea that we don't have to um, look at I, <clears throat> things about anger or lust or any of that anymore, of course, right. ridiculous. And I, I tell people, would you consider going to work in the morning without taking a shower? How many of you w would do that? Um, we have to understand that the commandments help us to be clean, right. to wash. Right. Jesus said, if you confess your sins, I'll forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So Jesus is the water in the laver. He's the living water that cleanses. Right. Just like he's the, the lamb of God at the brazen altar who takes away mm -hmm. our sins. So we have him being the lamb of God uh, on the brazen altar. We have him being the water in the laver and the candlestick. He is the light of the world. We know Jesus is the light of the world and he gives us plenty of light right. to walk in. Right. Uh, so at the uh, lampstand, Jesus is the light of the world. At the table is showbread. Uh, he's the, the bread of, of life. Right. He's the bread that came down from heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Rhema, fresh bread for mm -hmm. that day, right. as Dr. Cho would say. Yeah, right. I think you have a, a clip on that. Yeah, and in fact, let's go to that clip right now. Um, Dr. Cho talking about the Rhema word of God and the Rhema bread from the tabernacle prayer. Then when you turn to the right, there you see the showbread. On the table you see the 12 showbread. The showbread is a symbol of the Word of God. I say, Father, thank you for the showbread, the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Thank you for the Logos. And thank you for the Rhema also. Logos is a written Word of God, potentially yours, not practically yours. Rhema is uh, the inspired word of God. God take the word of God, the written word of God, and make it alive and inspire into your heart as a present word of God to you. Specific word to the specific person at a specific situation. Peter never walked up on the water by reading the experience of Israelites crossing over the Red Sea. Oh, since Israelites crossed over the Red Sea, I would walk on the water. No, he requested Rhema. Jesus, if you were Jesus, command me to walk. Command me to come. He asked a specific rhema. And Jesus said, come. Only Peter walked on the water, not other disciples. So Peter received the rhema, the specific word to a specific person. And so he did not walk out of boat by the written word, but he walked out by the word which he heard from Jesus Christ. Okay, so uh, Dr. Cho really feels strongly about that rhema word of God. And then he, he one of the other uh, steps that I think is very important is uh, that Jesus is our high priest, but then he calls us to be priests of our tabernacle as well. You want to uh, illuminate that a little bit? Yes, we're, we know from Peter, Peter told us we are to be, we're members of a royal priesthood. So... Um, I'm praying this for a number of years, the Lord has impressed on Marie and I that we are priests. Uh, every man is a priest of his home and he's to relate to his wife and his family the way Jesus relates to the church. That's the foundation of marriage. Uh, but the, the idea of being members of a royal priesthood, we, we know from the blood of Christ and the, and the benefits of the blood that we are sons. We're adopted as sons and daughters of God. We're all children of God and we're adopted as sons and daughters through the blood of Christ. We also know that we're Members, our vocation, as God would tell me, Derek, your vocation, even though you're a father and a mm -hmm. son and a husband, uh, your number one vocation is 
is being a priest. So that's why you come into my temple and minister to me. Then I'll give you the grace to go minister to your family. So that's kind of my daily routine is I'll go and minister to the Lord as a priest. And then he gives me the grace to love my wife, love my children, go uh, do my work, uh, whatever career I have. Mm -hmm. And that's how it works. And I believe that's very foundational to, to being a Christian, to being a follower of Christ is literally learning the family business, which is the priesthood. Right. Yeah. Now, um, so you would you're recommending and you're saying and Dr. Cho reinforces the fact that this is something that, you know, you should spend. You can spend more or less time every day, depending on the time that you have. Yeah, 30 minutes, yeah. 15 minutes, 30 minutes is a place. To yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, doing the tabernacle prayer is kind of charging your batteries, getting your direction, getting your marching orders, filling your tank exactly. for the rest of the day so that you can hear the Lord, that, so that you can uh, have the Lord's love and grace flowing through you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that is basically what Dr. Cho attributes the anointing of, of his ministry to. Um, right. That it wasn't a program, it wasn't a process, mm -hmm. of, it wasn't any magic tricks it wasn't money he was he just really it was this prayer and following the lord's daily guidance that that built his ministry to to what it is today yes right. and, he, and, and he, he thousands tells and thousands of people he right. tells that story yeah. in the video and of course millions and millions of people have been affected by his ministry at this point and but this prayer teaching which has been up on the web now for a year and a half and it has no marketing with it or anything like that. Uh, but people have started watching it through our mm -hmm. recommendations and others, and it's grown. And now it's, again, it's over 110,000 people. So that's 10,000 people a month. Yeah, right. about 10,000 people a month are watching it at this point. Yeah. So, And it's free, right? Yes. So, so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have a link on our KSCE website mm -hmm. to uh, tabernacleprayer.com. Is it dot what? tabernacle-prayer.com okay and we have that up and and so people our viewers are invited to go right now and mm -hmm. check out the course and and take it and pass it along to other people because right. the more we have praying that prayer right. the more we're going to show the love of christ to the world Absolutely. right That's right Absolutely. thank you very much we're out of time again i'm sorry but uh, it's been delightful and uh are you hungry for a transformed prayer life well, this may be what you've been looking for, so check it out. Let us know on Facebook, Twitter, or ksce.com backslash decision point. Thank you for watching.